All right, I just thought that I would make a quick video here about the Church of Christ, and they talk about this plan of salvation all the time. I got a bunch of these different things from a certain Church of Christ, and this plan of salvation here says, one, that you have to hear, two, that you have to believe, three, you have to repent, four, you have to confess, and then five, you have to be baptized, and then Six, you have to remain faithful. So the first four I agree with, and to me they're all kind of the same, or the same sides of different coin, or the same different sides of the same coin, or whatever. Um, but uh, number five, I don't agree with that you have to be baptized to be saved, and number six, I don't agree with, which is basically that you can lose your salvation. You have to remain faithful, or else you'll be cut out of it. So, I wanted to look at these Remain Faithful passages. I wanted to see what they were exactly. And I mean, I knew what the Galatians one was going to be, but let's look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 4, which is the most common one you see all the time. It says, Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. And this is the same things, basically, that Jesus always preached and Paul always preached. And you have to understand the time and everything, how the Jews thought that because they were Jews, that they were guaranteed to be saved. They didn't understand that salvation was by faith. They did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. They thought that they were already God's chosen people, that they were, you know, they, they thought that they were basically God's spiritual children. And he's saying, you know, Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever you, of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. You know, he says, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. And so, he's saying that, you know, he mentions circumcision, uh, you know, or, or uncircumcision. So, he, this is what he said over and over again, that, you know, the true Jews are the Jews... Um, in spirit, and there's no difference between Jew or Gentile. You know, the only save, the only difference is, you know, the saved and the unsaved, and those who believe and those who don't. And so somehow, these people were being persuaded that they needed to be circumcised, or, you know, that, uh, you know, because I go back, let's go back to the other, or just go back to the very beginning of the chapter where, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. And so, it is impossible for somebody to be saved by works. And Paul said that over and over again. And that's what these Jews did. They sought to be saved by the fact that they were born Jews, but also by their deeds. And so, these people, or I guess Gentiles or whatever, they were being persuaded to be circumcised and that, you know, they needed to follow the Jewish way. And Paul said over and over again, and Jesus said that, you know, salvation comes by faith. Not by works, not by being born a Jew. And um, it's impossible to satisfy the whole law, because everyone has sinned. And, uh, you know, only Jesus could do that, because he was, he is the God-man. So... It's not talking about losing salvation at all. And people will think, well, he's talking to people who are saved, and then he's saying 
that uh, Christ has become of no effect to you because they wanted to be circumcised or, circumcised or they wanted to be justified by the law. So they say that fallen from grace means lost salvation. That's not what it means. He's basically saying that, you know, they're not understanding what it's all about, what God wants, and what they need to do to have faith in the Lord. And, um, you know, either they didn't get it to begin with because they were being persuaded to do this. You know, he's telling them this is not, you know, the right thing to do. He's not saying that they're losing salvation, you know, or that they were ever saved to begin with. But he's just straightening them out. on what God wants. Faith, which worketh by love. And so um, they were they were putting themselves under bondage, which, you know, they didn't need to do and they shouldn't have done. And so it's not whether, you know, they do these works or not, but it's whether you believe that these works are what are going to save you. And I'm sorry, I probably just confused everything, but, you know, it's it's not talking about losing salvation, okay? The context has to do with, you know, people who are Jewish or Jewish Christians were convincing these men, these Gentiles, to, to do the... Jewish things. So, anyway, it doesn't have anything to do with losing salvation. And let's look at chapter, or 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, which says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. So, again, they think lest he fall means lose salvation. But this is talking about falling into temptation to sin. Now all these, you know, it's talking about sin. Now all these things happen unto them for end samples that are written for admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. And it says, Wherefore let him that thinketh that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful and will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. So this has nothing to do with you know, falling out of your salvation. It has to do with falling into sin, which has plenty of consequences. Okay. Um, just like King David, or plenty of examples in the Bible, Noah. Okay, so either you're saying that this verse teaches that sin can cause you to lose salvation. If that's what you believe this verse teaches, then you're basically saying that to be saved, you have to be sinlessly perfect. You're basically saying that there's no such thing as a Christian who commits sin which is completely wrong. So that's the only ways that I can see it. Um, if that's the way that you interpret that, that's the conclusion that it comes to. So you see there's obviously a problem there. So then you're believing sinless perfection. Um, and so, you know, there's different ways that people teach that salvation can be lost, too. Some say, yeah, if you sin, you, they do. They outright will teach sinless perfection. If you commit any sin or something, you lose your salvation. Or or they say, you know, like this says, remain faithful. They'll say, well, if you lose your faith in Christ or something, then you are going to lose your salvation. But I don't see how a Christian would lose their faith in Christ. But... I mean, that's that's what you, this verse teaches, take heed unless you fall into temptation, unless you fall into sin. So, let's look at the next one, which is Revelation 2.10. Oops. 
talked about this too, I think. Let's see what it says again. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. It's kind of a weird verse to to use this, to, to say that you have to remain faithful. It says, Be thou faithful unto death. Well, obviously, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. You see, they take this verse and they say that you have to remain faithful until your death, or you will lose your salvation. You know, if you're faithful for some time, and then, you know, you're not faithful, then you've lost your salvation, is basically what they're saying. But what the focus of this verse is, is encouragement to believers, is saying that you're going to go through hell, because Satan is going to tempt you and, tr and try you, just like Job was tried. How, you know, his whole family was killed and everything else, basically, and he was stricken with disease. Job was tried and tormented and had to go through hell, but he remained faithful and uh, he got everything back like tenfold or whatever, you know, in the end. So the whole point of this is encouragement that you're going to be rewarded for all this hell that you're going to go through as a Christian. The point isn't that you're going to lose your salvation. So you see, you have to look at these verses and think, what's the context and what's the writer trying to get across here? So it's completely opposite of what they want you to believe. Okay. It's not like, uh, when it says, be faithful unto death, it's like an admonition saying, um, you know, you will get the the crown of life which means basically eternal life, which means basically, you know, in the end, we're victorious because Christ is victorious. Our reward is Christ. Our reward is heaven. Saying all of this is going to be worth it. It's not saying, it's not, um, you know, I can't look at the words right now, but <laughs> it's an admonition to keep going. It's not like a warning against not being faithful or something. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, so those are those three verses. Foolishness, foolishness. It's called taking verses out of context. to have them teach something they don't teach. So, that's going to be it. God bless.